Here we go. So um, today's topic is a double for your trouble. So welcome everyone. Welcome some of my, my regulars who I haven't seen for a while. Welcome back. It's good to see your beautiful faces. It'd be good to see your beautiful faces if you guys would be so wonderful and turn your cameras on and let me see your faces without you all hiding behind. There are some very beautiful people on here and I would love to see your faces. So yeah, flick on your cameras, guys. Let me see you. Like, let me see. Hey, Wesleyana, beautiful and red light. In the red light. Yes, put on your cameras. Patricia, I can see a pretty face. Who can't I see? Josie, I can see you drive, girl. I see you, girl. I see you. It's doing that silly two page thing again. So I can't see everybody all at once, which is really annoying. Um, yeah, quite annoying. But it's all good. It's all good. So those of you who are in the background, um, yeah, but it's cool. I can see some of you. Oh, Donna, I saw you. Hi, God, Hi, it's so good to see you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Andrea. Yes, darling. Can you change your position? Because we can see the reflection of your thing on your glasses and it looks you know funny. What? You're always, you know what, you're always going to see that, you know? No, we don't, but always. I don't know. It, it looks funny. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how to change it. <laughs> so like this. <laughs> I got some googly eyes on my glasses. Lean, lean back. Lean back on the chair and you won't <laughs> see it as such much. Oh, no, but that's well, I got you wasn't seeing it before, like but you're still seeing it now. I got to do it like, really? Really? So, I do it. so guys, today, just to, Hi, let, Mom. Do, <laughs> do it with the glare. All right, I'll take them off and I'll put them on when I need to read. How's that? Is that better? Yeah. Yeah? All right, then you can see yeah, my face. That plan. is so funny. You lot are hilarious. You're still like, lean back. I'm like, mm. <laughs> All right. How is everyone doing today? You know how we do, like we don't keep it all formal. It really is just a family thing. And I really want you guys to feel at home and welcome here because this is just a, an amazing family of people who are like-minded. And we're a little bit, you know, we think outside of the box a little bit. And I love that about us. And today we're gonna talk about um, double for your trouble. Now, last week we were talking about uh, disappointment and boy but Jesus did the disappointment hit me in the week and I really had to check Wagwan you know when I when I when I tell you when I'm here and I talk with you guys and I'm telling you all this stuff and we're talking and you know God's revealing stuff you better believe you me I get challenged by it every single time Hey, listen, I'm there telling you about disappointment. <laughs> you better, what's the thing that come lash me this week? <laughs> don't, don't laugh. It's so, listen, I'm not just here doing iron. You guys are iron. You guys sharpen me. So every week I come and I share with you guys, please believe you me that you guys are keeping me sharp. It's such an encouragement to even sit in front of you guys and encourage you week after week. Yeah, it's so humbling. And trust me, it's, it really is. When you get into the season that God has called you to be in and the blessings start to flow, hmm, we gonna talk about it today. We gonna talk about it. I'm gonna give you the tea. We gonna talk about it. So we're talking about this double double and we're talking about disappointment. Now, I just wanna show of hands, how many of you have felt disappointment? Like, right Donna right mom disappointment you felt disappointment right yeah those of you putting up the virtual hands yes uh, the disappointment let's talk about it now I want to share my story with you because you know in the bible when it says Jesus was a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief if they wrote a verse like that about me in the bible it would be she was a gal of rejection and acquainted with disappointment. <laughs> That's what it would say. This is what it would say. She was a girl of rejection and acquainted with disappointment. And I tell you, I tell you no lies. 
disappointment has debilitated me. Disappointment has crippled me, has paralyzed me, has stopped me moving in a direction that I know I should go in. Disappointment has stopped me from um, trying, has stopped me from pursuing, has stopped me from doing so many things that I should have and could have done, but because of the fear of the disappointment, I, I didn't want to do it because I, it was people say fear of failure. But remember we spoke last week and what comes after failure? Disappointment. So then what is the root of everything that we experience? Disappointment. If you've grown up in, in a household where the parents weren't quite right, disappointment. If you go for a job that you really wanted and you never got it, disappointment. If you wanted a relationship with somebody and it, it fell apart, what do you feel after the hurt, after the heartbreak? Disappointment, because you feel like you've been let down again. Disappointment comes in so many shapes and forms. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share a story with you guys and um, it is quite close to my heart. And um, it, I, I've shared it briefly, but I don't think I've shared it like this. And I, I remember being probably about eight or nine years old and I remember being in the playground at school. And I'm telling you this because this was where disappointment entered my life. This was where that, that neural pathway for disappointment was created. It was at this point. And one of the key things to finding out how to release yourself from a thing is to find out what is the root cause. Why am I always angry? Why am I always getting into bad relationships? Why do I always attract hurt? Why do I always attract people who take advantage of me? Why do I always, why do I, you fill in the blank. Why do I always, why does it always, why does that always happen to me? Fill in the blank, whatever it is. When you trace back to the first time you experienced that thing, more than likely that is the root cause. And if it is something that maybe was in adulthood, you know, you might remember it. If it's something is it in childhood, you might have a vague memory of it. But childhood is the place where we, a lot of our neural pathways are created. A lot of our fears, a lot of our insecurities, a lot of our stuff comes from childhood. And childhood trauma, hmm, it's not a good thing. It's just a bad thing. And it ha can cause you it can really still manifest in your adult life. It can still manifest in your adult life. You might find you can't do something or you might find that a set, you have a certain trait and it really could be coming from childhood trauma. And like I said, this disappointment thing, for me, it was a childhood traumatic experience. So I remember being about eight or nine, I was in um, primary school and I remember I was being bullied by these boys and they were saying nasty things to me and me and my brother went to the same school. I won't say which one. <laughs> we went to the same school and um, these boys were bullying me. And, you know, it's like when you, you see your big brother coming in the distance. So you start get happy and you start get brave because, yep, my big brother's coming. So he's going to tell you look off and telling me off. And I started getting brave with myself. And as he got closer and closer, the boys started to jest back and, you know, look at him. And he turned around and he said to them, you can do whatever you want to her. I don't care because she's ugly. And my heart sank. And I mean, it sank to the depths of, and remember we were children, so it's not like I hold it against him now. You know, it's not, it's, it's not that, but I'm just sharing the story with you. My heart sank. And I felt so disappointed on such a deep level that even when I think about it, when I talk about it, it still feels the same. Like the feeling, I remember the feeling. And whenever I feel disappointed, that's the feeling that comes back. That same feeling. I feel like I'm right back there again. And then as you guys know, um, moving forward, loads of other disappointments, but I'm going to talk about a few of my main, main ones, my major ones. So then I remember um, 20, 2012, I decided to overcome a fear, a phobia. I had a phobia of competitions and um, auditioning for things. 
and I decided to overcome it by auditioning for one of the biggest TV shows. Well, it's not the biggest, but one of them big ones, um, The Voice UK. And it was on BBC at the time. And I auditioned and I got through all the stages, all the stages that I made it onto the show. I even had a judge turn around for me. And I thought, right, it's looking like my career is about this. God's about to do it. Yes. All right, Jesus, I'm so ready to be famous. I'm so ready. I'm ready, Jesus. And then came the battle rounds and I got sent home. In front of 10 million people, I got sent home and I was crushed. I was crushed. You know, and it's like, I can't even express. I cried for seven days straight. I cried. I was crushed because I thought, Finally, God, people are going to see what you've put in me. Finally, I'm going to be able to show the world what you've put on the inside of me. And then nothing. Thank you so much for being on the show. It was lovely to have you. Bye. That was it. All I had was my Twitter followers and my name and my big fabulous self. And I was like, Lord, wow. So I thought, all right, cool. Got over it dusted myself off, got myself back up again. Right, let's go again. You know, uh, always a try of me. I will not be knocked down. Hmm. I said, I'm going to go for a gospel one this time. Maybe Jesus didn't want me to go in the secular world. So I'm going to go for a gospel one. I went on this show called Time to Shine. Did really great. I made it through to the finals this time, guys. I got through to the finals. And as I, they showed my reel, and as I stepped up to the mic to do the whole TV station cut off. The whole, you know when you see the lines? The, the whole TV station. I said, Lord, you're really messing with my life. I said, I don't understand. How? The whole TV station. I said, Lord, no. These levels of disappointment are not making sense to my brain. And then they, I told them, listen, your TV station cut off. You need to give me another chance. I, this is not fair. This is injustice. And they said, okay, Andre, we'll give you another chance. I then it was too late. The people done voted for who they wanted. They spent their 50p to vote for that one. So they didn't come and vote for me. I didn't get the votes. And then they still sent me home. I was devastated. The disappointment was unreal. That's just a couple of my disappointment stories. You know, we're not even gonna talk about the 3,000 pound wedding dress that I bought that I never got to wear, that I left in the shop. We're not gonna talk about that one. We're not gonna talk about it. We're not gonna talk about being in love with somebody and then having to watch them marry somebody else in front of your face. We're not gonna talk about that. No, just, we're just not gonna talk about those ones. We're gonna leave those ones aside. So if I tell you, I understand. And even talking about them, I am not gonna sit here and play like I've got it together. My chest is so tight. I sit here and I talk and my, <laughs> my chest is tight with <laughs> the anxiety of it. So guys, this, is, this, this subject here today is very close to my twist. <laughs> it's my heart and my chest, all of it. My twist is close. Right, so I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and be calm because I've had anxiety about it. I'm like, Lord Jesus. <sighs> but you know what? God's, God's plans are bigger than our pain. And that's what we have to, oh, that was a good one. God's plans are bigger than our pain. And when you understand that, God was like, all right, Andre, you're going to be fine because I know what I've got in store for you. And when I bless you, you're not going to remember the hurt. You'll be like, disappointment. Oh, Jesus, you should have gave me more. Because especially when he starts telling you about double for your trouble. Hey, now we're getting excited. Double for your trouble. I was like, Lord, like on the real though, if you just gave me equal to what I've been through, I would be really blessed. I would be really, really blessed. If you just give me equal to what I've already been through, I'm gonna be really blessed. And I thought, double? Whew, that's, that's a lot, Jesus, that's a lot. 
that's a lot. And I really started to think about it. Double for your trouble. Now, I'm gonna ask you, and I'm gonna ask you this question twice. I'm gonna ask you now, how many of you are ready for double for your trouble? How many of you are ready to get the double portion? Yeah, I can see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. Yeah, I see, I see you done. <laughs> I see your hands. I see your hands. Oh, yes, mama. I see your hands. Yeah. Double. How many of you guys are really ready for double? Because I want to talk to you about the double portion. I want to talk to you about it. So, you know, I like to give you a scripture. And this is where I'm going to have to put on the glasses because I can't see. All right. I might not look 45. I'm not 45, I'm 46, and I can't see with the glasses, so if I put on the glasses, don't laugh at me, sister Donna, it's not funny. Right, praise the Lord, hallelujah. So we're going to turn our Bibles, if you've got a Bible, Bible app, Joel chapter 2, verse 24, I believe. Joel chapter 2, verse 24 because you know I like to back up what I'm talking about with scripture uh here we go is it Joel chapter 2 no it's not that one no is it Joshua mom was it Joel or was it Joshua hold on I'm sure it was Joel give me a second um Actually, you know what? I'm just going to read it off here. I have it. Um, I'm going to read it off here. Yeah, Joel chapter 2, verse 25 to verse 27. And it reads, So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locusts, the, the consuming locusts, and the chewing locusts my great army which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read this scripture, it gives me a joy. It gives me a joy. And if you know about God, God doesn't do less than double. The double is the less, the least that God gives. When anything happens, God will always give you double. He says, I will give you blessings upon blessings. Hmm? I don't know, but to me, that says two. That says double. Blessings upon blessings. And then after he says, he will give you blessings upon blessings. He says, and then he will heap. Heap. What do you mean? It, double for my trouble, Jesus. I need to get ready. How many of you know that you need to be prepared for the blessings of God? Because a lot of times we ask for the blessings and we wonder why we're not getting the blessings. And can I tell you, it's not because you don't deserve it. It's not because God doesn't want to give it to you. But sometimes it's because you're not ready for it. You're not ready. I was, I was talking to my daughter. So we're, we're doing a fast and I, I'll put it out that we've already started. It's a three day fast and we just started today. And literally God just spoke it to me. So I'm literally just sharing it with you guys. And if you want to jump on for the last two days, we can stand together in faith because I'm telling you the spirit of disappointment is getting out of my life. I'm having nothing to do with it. Enough yeah. is enough. You see, you know, enough. I've had enough. I have things to do in the kingdom. We have things to do in the kingdom. I don't often get this passionate on ISA. I usually keep it together, but today I'm getting passionate. So please see with me. We have got things to do in the kingdom and we don't have time for disappointment. We don't have time for rejection. We don't have time for hurt. We don't have time for envy. We don't have time for jealousy. We don't have time for all these negative energies to come and block what God wants to do with us. We don't have time for it and it's time that we took a stand 
and understand who we are and whose we are and what we carry. The Bible tells us that we have power over all of the works of the enemy, all of them, all of them. Tell me one thing that you think you don't have power over and I'm going to prove you different right here, right now. Not one thing, not one. And everything that we go through, let me tell you something, everything. Hey, Kimori, everything that we go through, you better grow through it because God has a plan. There's a purpose for your pain. And I'm not saying that to be cliche because I know it sounds cliche, but everything. Everything that I've gone through, I will not change one blade of grass or one strand of weave because it's not my hair. Not one strand. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would not. And you know why I wouldn't? Because if I change it, I'm not going to be here at this point right now. And I know that this is where God wants me to be. I know that I'm in alignment with God's purpose and destiny for my life. And I'm telling you, every single one of you, if you're not there, we're going to get there together. Because I didn't come to leave any one of you behind. But all I can do is hold out my hand. And if you want to take it, let's go because we're going. If you want to take this hand and you want to say, Andrea, listen, I want to go with you because I'm going kingdom. You don't have to go with me, but, you know, go with Christ because Christ is in me and he's in all of us. So we go with him, you know, not trying to big up myself and I think it's not, it's not that. But I'm just saying, I'm willing to serve you as your tour guide. I'm willing to be your tour guide. I'm willing to read the map. I'm willing to show you guys what time it really is. Because we need to wake up. This, this dealing with disappointment, I'm sorry, it's been crippling God's people for too long. It's been crippling you guys in there for too long. Disappointed because of that relationship. Disappointed because of that job. Disappointed because of that, your financial situation, disappointed because you thought you should be somewhere in your life that you're not yet, disappointed because of whatever, disappointment, it will paralyze you. It will paralyze your purpose. Disappointment will paralyze your purpose. But when you get in alignment, all I can say is be ready for the blessings. Because right now I know. All I'm doing, I'm not even scratching the surface of the blessings of what God is about to pour out on me. I know that. I know. And it's already overwhelming me. The fact that you guys come week after week and you sit with me and you, 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 you're with me, this, it overwhelms me sometimes. I'm like, Lord, how? Like, why? But I'm so grateful to God for allowing me to come and serve you guys. I am so grateful. I am so grateful. I am so grateful, you know? But like I said, if you guys are ready, I'm ready. And, and, and you know me, I don't come on here and sell my stuff. I'm not selling anything. But I'm gonna tell you, the love journey, it's not a joke. It will change your life. Within seven weeks, you will not recognize yourself after seven weeks, I promise you. And there is testimony after testimony in this room. I can pick on any one of the people who are on the love journey and they will tell you, I am not giving you breeze. It's the truth. Because you know what happens? The truth sets you free. And that's all I talk to you. When you come and sit with me, we gonna talk the truth. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's ugly. Sometimes it's messy. Sometimes it's painful. But I'm telling you, what you reveal you heal. Remember that a couple of weeks ago? That just slotted in there nicely, didn't it? <laughs> but what you reveal, you heal. And God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for your life. Destiny is for you. It's all there waiting for you. But you've got to take it. You can't just sit down and just coast along and let life just, it's been too long. How many, of you, how many of you are fed up with being fed up? How many of you sick of being sick? What do you mean? I, I'm over it. I, I, I said goodbye to depression about three, four months ago. I had it for 16 years. I suffered with depression. I was worship leading. I was on the TV. I was doing all this stuff. 
and I was suffering from depression. And where did the depression come from? Disappointment. Can I tell you that depression is disappointment that's trying to find its way out and it can't? Can I tell you that? It doesn't, it, it, it's stuck. Depression is stuck. Disappointment. Ugh. Jesus, I felt that. I don't know if any of you felt that, but I felt that. You've been wondering what? That's what depression is. It's stuck. Disappointment. And I'm telling you, I am coming against disappointment this week. I am coming against it. That includes depression. That includes anxiety. That includes all mental stuff, bipolar, ADHD. These things come through disappointment. And I know, I know the devil's not happy with me, I know. But you know what? I'm not scared of him because God told me that I have power over all the works of the enemy. We have power over all the works of the enemy. We have power over all of the works of the enemy. And I'm telling you, when you start to stand in the authority that God has given you, disappointment ain't gonna have no place in your life. Disappointment is not gonna, depression, what's that? What is that? Grief, hmm, grief, ooh, that's a bad little one there. That's another one, grief, yeah. But what does it boil down to? Disappointment. My dad's passed, I know he's gone to heaven, I miss him, but you know what I was disappointed about? That I wasn't gonna have my dad to walk me down the aisle, I've never been married. He lashed me, that was the first thing that hit me. I said, hmm, who's gonna walk me down the aisle? I'm not married yet. Wait, I've got no one to walk me down the aisle. And people were like, oh, you can have your brother, or you can have your, it's not my dad. It's not my dad. I was disappointed. I said, God, I hear what you did, and I understand what you did, but you could have at least waited until at least walked down the aisle. You could have waited, Jesus. But no, your will be done, as usual, to sense the sarcasm. I was being very sarcastic. But I meant it. <laughs> Even with the sarcasm in my chest, that was in my twist as well. That was, that was in the twist. It was right in my, it was in there, right? But <laughs> I said, your will be done. And I really made my peace with it. And I made my peace of it so much that if I was to do it all over again, I wouldn't stop my dad from getting in the car. I wouldn't. Because, because he went, this anointing came. Because I went to the depths of the, I was under the ground. I was finished. I couldn't sing. I couldn't talk. I couldn't do Sussy Sunday. I couldn't do nothing. I was smoking, I was drinking, I was a mess. I'm telling the truth, I was smoking marijuana, I was doing all funny stuff, I was a mess. But one day, God said, Andre, it's time to get back up now. I was like, but I'm still a mess. He's like, don't worry about it, let's go. I'm like, but Lord, I haven't stopped doing some of the stuff. Don't worry about it, let's go. Let's go, I got stuff for you to do. We'll deal with the stuff along the way. And all I did was be obedient and just humble myself and realize that God is bigger than my stuff. God ain't sitting here condemning me. People can condemn me, you guys can condemn me. It doesn't matter. I'm still doing what God told me to do because he's the one I have to go and stand before. I don't have to stand before any of you. I have to stand before my maker. And that's who you have to stand before. You don't have to stand before no one person, not one. You have to stand before your maker, which is God. You have to stand before him. And when he says, what did you do with the gifts that I gave you? And I'm like, mm -hmm, well, because what had happened was, what? I ain't got time. I got answer to him. So if you guys want to worry about, oh, I haven't, I haven't stopped doing this. So I haven't stopped doing that. Get it together because somebody somewhere needs you right where you're at right now. You might think you're in the lowest point of your life, but I'm telling you somebody somewhere needs to hear something that you've got to say because you have a light and you are a light.
and you have love in your heart that is so beautiful that they just just need to be around you but because sometimes we're so stuck in our own pity party we're stuck in our own depression that we don't understand that even in our total mess we can still be a message to somebody we can still be a message to somebody in our mess and we have to understand that God is no respect to a person I'm not saying that if you willfully do something when we just keep doing it and you know there's no like because of relationship you want to make sure that you're living right you want to make sure that you're pleasing to God you want to make sure that you're showing love you want to make sure but God's not waiting for you to get it together because if you could have got it together by yourself you wouldn't need him if you could have got it together by yourself what you need Jesus for what you need the savior this flesh that we're living in babes is fighting against you every single minute of the day he told me don't go to the gym today he told me i was tired because i was fasting he said don't go to the gym i didn't listen i put my clothes on and i took my little shopping bag because i didn't have a gym bag <laughs> that laugh took my little shopping bag put my stuff in my pink shopping bag and i went to where did i go sports director bought a sports bag because <laughs> i've been trundling with my little shopping bag for two weeks I said no, Jaya, we're serious about this. Let's go and get the sports bag. But I was ready to go with my shopping bag. I've been going with my shopping bag. Once upon a time, I'll be like, no, I can't go. Who cares about my shopping bag? Nobody doesn't care. It's me. Most of the time, the stuff that we're worried about, the stuff that's hindering us, is in our own head, you know. Ain't nobody worried about me walking in with a shopping bag. I saw a lady in there with her suitcase today. I said, and I was like, <laughs> don't make me laugh. And I was worried about my shopping bag. My girl had a whole suitcase. What do you mean? I said, well, she just knows she had to be at the gym. She didn't care whether she had taken stuff in the suitcase or a shopping bag. She went to the gym. And I said, you know what? And so did I. I went to the gym today and I feel so proud of myself that I went. I'm not going to tell you what I did at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't just sit and have a coffee. No, I didn't. I, I did the re I did the relaxation. I did I did the relaxation stuff today. I didn't really work very hard, but I made it to the gym. So I'm still creating a habit of going to the gym, and that's what we have to do. We have to create habits of having positive mindsets. We have to create habits of keeping our minds positive and understanding that negativity will come, but it takes a daily. What does the Bible say? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How are you going to do that daily? You daily decide, you make decisions. Me, I don't make excuses. I make choices and decisions. I don't make excuses for stuff, you know. If I said it, I said it. If I did it, I did it. I don't take it back. And if you're offended by it, and I didn't mean to offend you, that's your business. Because that's on you. Sounds rude, isn't it? but that's your business because I was coming to you in love and you took offense. You took it. I can't take it back. It wasn't mine. You took it. What do you want me to do? I'm not saying sorry because I'm learning to hold on to my peace. I'm learning that how you perceive me doesn't define me because if you get offended by something I say and I become all apologetic when I know that I didn't mean that, what does that mean? I'm giving you too much of my power, too much of my peace. I start feeling guilty for something I didn't even mean. I didn't even do anything. You making me feel, you can't. You can't make anybody feel anything. I choose and I choose to not. Today, guys, choose to walk in forgiveness. And can I tell you the antidote? I, was, I forgot, this is the big thing. Do you guys want to know the antidote for disappointment I know what it is it's amazing I know what the antidote for disappointment is and if you want to know what it is tune in next week I love you all it's been a good night we're joking <laughs> bye bye like this
<laughs> Phil was like, no. Mom was like, no, Jay, what are you doing? You're not that. <laughs> the antidote for disappointment is something so, it's kind of simple when you really think about it. The antidote for disappointment is gratitude. When God revealed to me, he said, Andrea, think of the thing that you've been the most disappointed about. And I thought about it and I thought about the first thing that happened to me. And then I thought about other things that have happened. And I thought, okay. I thought about relationships that didn't work out. I thought about the heartbreaks. And I kid you not, when I look back at some of the relationships, I thank the Lord in heaven that they didn't work out. I'm not lying to you. When I see some of the jobs that I would have taken, I thank the good Lord Jesus that they didn't give me the job. Or I had the good sense to turn it down. <laughs> Either one. Listen, the Bible says all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. When you understand that you become grateful. I'm even grateful to what my brother did in that, in that playground. You know why? because he taught me that I need to defend myself. I don't need to depend on people to defend me. I got to get a backbone and I got to start defending myself. And that's what it taught me. And then I got a boldness, a boldness now, which I use for God's glory. So if that didn't happen, maybe I wouldn't be as bold because I'd always be running to my big brother. But I got a boldness. I got a boldness that now I can get in front of the camera and talk to you guys and be my silly self. And I don't care. I don't care. I've been called the worst things. What do you want to say to me? Oh, you're ugly. Okay, then. Oh, you got a big forehead. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> plenty of brain for going there, you know, plenty of brain. That's why my forehead big. I feel big. Too much brains. Your forehead on the other hand is very small, isn't it? No, that's rude. <laughs> But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, you're not going to steal my peace because you're telling, telling me something that I already know. But you know when people, you know when people can steal your peace is when you haven't fully accepted who you are. And then someone comes and says the negative stuff about you that you already believe about yourself. I'll say it again. How people can steal your peace is when they say the negative things about you that you already think about yourself. Because I tell you what, if you didn't think it, it couldn't hurt you. If you didn't think it, it could not hurt you. If I go to Patricia and I'll be like, Patricia, you're blue. She'll be like, shut up, child. Go, go, stop, you're silly. Yeah, you're just blue, you're blue. She doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't equate to her brain. Yeah, it doesn't. But if, if I go to somebody who's conscious about their weight and I say, hmm, you gained a few pounds, didn't you? Their whole world is going to implode. Oh my God, oh my God. What, you didn't know you was gaining weight? What, when you was eating the crisps and the chocolate last night? What, you didn't know? You knew. This is why you've been trying to go Jenny Craig diet, slimming world. You already know. They're already telling you something that you already know. What are you upset for? But it's because you haven't accepted it. You haven't accepted that just, just who you are and you're owning it and loving it while you're going through it. Me, Jesus have mercy on my soul. I'm still a work in progress. Don't let me, don't let me, don't let me sell you dreams. <laughs> don't let me sell you dreams. If someone comes and says the wrong thing to me, and I haven't, it's something that I haven't, I haven't dealt with it, I might say a naughty word. I might cuss them. I just might. And then I'll be like, Jesus, I should know better. And it's, it's a reveal to heal moment. Thank you, Jesus. Attitude of gratitude. And I'll go home and I will deal with it because it will just be a revelation that it's something I haven't dealt with yet. And that is where this disappointment, silly little, silly little thing came and 
bit me. It bit me hard. <laughs> bit me in my twist right there. Yeah. And I said, this is something I have to deal with. And I didn't want to deal with it because it hurts. When it, is, it, it feels like a, I don't know. Like, this, how do you describe disappointment? It's like something has got hold of your soul and twisted it and, and took all the joy out, squeezed the joy. Ooh. That, that dream squeezed all the joy out and it feels like a, it's like a knot in, and it, it just, it hits me here. Ugh. But I'm telling you this week I'm doing the fast and it's called double for my trouble. Devil, you're gonna pay me back. All of the years that I lost because of disappointment, all the years, all the things, all the blessings, all the finances, everything, all the relationship, whew, double, double. Look, don't hate when you not see my husband, you know. Don't hate when you see him. Don't hate, all right? This is all I can tell you. When you see my husband, don't hate. Don't hate. Just know my journey, innit? You know my story. You know my journey. When you see him, don't hate. Don't hate. Congratulate, because I'm going to do the same for you. That's right. I will do the same. Donate. When I see you making that 10 million and I've only made five, I ain't going to hate. Because I don't know what you lost. I don't know what you went through. I don't know what, what you overcame. I don't know. But I'm telling you something. Hmm. Be ready for the blessings. This is the next thing we have to talk about now. We have to talk about this. Now, how many of you are ready for a financial blessing? How many of you are ready for double? Ready for double? Now, this is going to mess with you, and it messed with me too. How many of you are in debt? <laughs> you don't have to tell. You don't have to tell. You don't, you don't have to tell your business. I'm not asking you to tell your business. Yeah? How many of you have missed credit card payments? and all these funny stuff yeah but then we're saying to god i'm ready but we're not even being a good steward over what we have now and i know that was a bit of a because i felt that me too but it's something i've been working on and i'm like lord i need to be a good steward over my finances I've been working on getting my credit right and getting out of debt and sorting myself out because I want to be a good steward. It wasn't actually because I wanted to double bless them. It was because I wanted to be a good, a good steward over what God gave me. Because I knew that at some point I was going to have to be blessed with more because of where God's taken me. So I wanted to be able to manage money. So I had to learn. How do I manage money? How do I manage, how do I manage finances? I wanted to, I had to learn because I want, when God blesses me, it doesn't overtake me and destroy me. It's like, if you, if you have a child and the child comes to you and says, mom, I want a car and they're only 16 or they've just passed their, their test, they're 18, they've just passed their test and they say, mom, I want a car. Are you going to go out and buy them a Bentley? That's a huge blessing. But why would you give a child a Bentley or your, your son or daughter that's just passed their driving test, why would you give them a Bentley? Do you know how powerful those cars are? They wouldn't, they wouldn't know how to take care of it. They wouldn't know how to appreciate it. They wouldn't know. And God is so mindful that with us, it's the same principle. He's like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna give you too much because he said to whom much is given, much is required. That means you're going to have to go through some character building. You're going to have to go through some testing. You're going to have to go through some hard water, some high water, some low water. You have to, you're going to have to go through some hot, cold, high valley, low, low valley, high mountain. You're going to have to go through. Because God wants you, he wants to know that he can bless you with the much and it will not kill you. He wants to know. If he wanted to give you like a big diamond and you got weak hands because they keep dropping the ball, how's he going to give you the big diamond and you keep dropping the ball? He can't give you the diamond until you learn to hold the ball. Stop dropping the ball, guys. God wants to give you a diamond. That's another good one. <laughs> Stop dropping the ball because God wants to give you a diamond. 
when he gives you the little, be faithful in it. Be faithful. Be faithful in the little that you have. Some of you have got gifts and you don't even acknowledge your gifts. You don't use your gifts for the kingdom. You don't use your gifts. Some of you are good talkers. Some of you are good at writing. Some of you are good at graphics. Some of you are good at accounts. Some of you are good business people. Some of you are actors and singers and, 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 and counselors and, and, and stuff. Why? Well, you, you need to use your gift for the kingdom. This is why I gave it to you. This is why I gave it to you. You know why God made me a chai patty? Because he knew I was going to have ISI one day. <laughs> and he knew I'd have to sit here and just talk for like an hour or two, nonstop, without anybody chiming in. He knew. So what did he do? He made me a chatterbox. And I have no problem sitting here chatting. It's great. <laughs> to be able to talk for two hours uninterrupted. That's heaven for me, I tell you. I'm a chatterbox. Don't know. Feel free to chime in though, babes. Like, and you guys know. I'm so open. Donna, talk to me. Is this blessing you? It's blessing me so much. I was just trying to look how to share it to some of my friends on WhatsApp, but I couldn't see it. So next oh, time, okay. I'll, uh, yeah, copy the link. Yeah, that's somehow. literally all you have to do. You just, just copy it, like hold your finger on it, what I put in the, in the group. Hold your finger on it, but copy the text. Don't copy, don't forward the image, because if you forward it, guys, only the image goes so if you've been sharing it what you have to do is copy the text and then if you can save the image then you can add the image to the text yourself but mm -hmm. if you don't want to do all of that just forward the link just copy the link and forward that you know they'll they'll get the gist of it but i'm telling you god is doing some amazing stuff and i'm i'm so blessed by today i'm so blessed to have you all in here today and you know hey junior you know, but it's so, it's God, God is amazing. And is anybody else, anybody else want to say anything? Is anybody else getting got blessed by this? Is anybody inspired or ready to join me on my fast? There's only two more days. Cause we, I want to, I want to, I want to get rid of this, this disappointment. I'm not having it. I'm not. And I'm going to come with the testimony next week. I'm going to tell you whatever God's doing, whatever. I'm coming with the testimony. And if I tell you, even as I said it, it's like, the, what if you don't have a testimony? <gasps> literally that's what happens and just being honest just being honest i just being honest i said it i'm gonna come with a testimony next week Ooh. what happens Ooh. i said Jesus. i don't want to be embarrassed but now, that's what faith is all about what's it's, that you know you said um <clears throat> you might they might think that you might not have a testimony, but that's where you're going to put your faith out, believing and trusting that God is going to, <clears throat> sorry, give you the testimony because that's what you're fasting for, you know. And he says, whatsoever you ask in my name, believing, mm -hmm. you will receive. You see, mm -hmm. got to believe. There's a condition to get it. You've got mm -hmm. to believe. Yeah. you got to trust him. Yeah at his word, because he promised that you will get it, whatever you're fasting for, as long as your faith is holding on, you will get it. Mm. Next week, you're going to come back with your testimony. If you don't have the faith for it, I have faith for you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so cute. I can't deal with you. You're so cute. <laughs> that was just so cute, guys. <laughs> Thank you, mum. <laughs> you know what, though? But sometimes it's what you need, you know? You know, even Jesus had those friends, you know? It was like, or even, what's his name? He had to, he had to get someone to hold up his hand. Because sometimes we, we just can't do it alone. Sometimes we just need that support. Sometimes we just need that person that's in our corner. And I know for all of my um, love journey um, guys in here, that's all I am. I'm, I'm there to just hold your hand up. When you're weak, I'm going to be strong for you. And then we're going to be strong together. And we're going to kick the devil's butt. And we're going to get you walking in victory and in your purpose and in your destiny. And I, like I said, I don't sell this to anybody, but I'm telling you, this love journey is a serious walk. It's a serious, serious thing. And if you've been thinking about it, just 
come and have a consultation call with me. Come and check it out. Come and see what's what's really good. Come and check it out. But I'm telling you, change your life. Hey, levels, levels, mum. Yeah, testimony. Uh, testimony. Sorry, faith works. Faith is the only thing God will listen to. Your faith, He will listen. Faith works. I've got a testimony I'm going to share with some of you. Uh, well, all of you. Um, <laughs> a few weeks ago, um, I went into my bank account. And when I opened the account, there was only £3.65. I could never forget the amount. And I went into my, the room and I started to pray. I said, Lord, I need a miracle now. I need a miracle. I prayed and I just left it. A week later, I don't even think it was a week, it's a few days, my son rang me and he said, Mom, do you want me to go to the house and do anything? I said, um, yeah, please go and water my plants. At that time, I was at Andreas because I live in Ipswich and I was in London. And then he came and he called me. He says, Mom, there's an envelope pushed through your front door. And I opened it and there's 250 pounds in the envelope. And I thought, wow, God has come through for me. I couldn't wait to get home to get my 250 pounds. I said, Lord, I don't know who you've used, but I know you've talked to someone and they were obedient to your word and I'm telling you saints I got 250 pounds and all I had was three pounds and 65 pence and God answered my prayer last week somebody called me and told me because I prayed I always say Lord I need a finance somebody called me and told me they've put they haven't put, they didn't tell me how much they put they just said I've put some money in your account so I went to check my account to see how much they put, 100 pounds. All you do is trust God. He said, I will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory and says, God is rich. He is rich. You just got to trust. I love this girl. What's her name? Donna? Donna Smith. <laughs> Yeah, praise God, you know, trust God, trust him, just pray and leave it, just trust it, amen, that's my Still bit. Mom. Thank you, yeah, but you, yeah. Know, you know I'm going to draw you out, innit, I've got to draw you out, I've got to draw you out, I have to, now remember guys, I said, when you pray to God, you need to be ready <laughs> for when God really does want to bless you, yes, 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 the truth. Shame the devil. Now, this is not even a shame the devil. This is this is real. Because sometimes I tell you what, when God blesses you, hmm, you will know what to do with yourself. You're there, all of you in here saying, I'm ready for double double. You need to be ready because when God opens those floodgates and no, he calls us a double double. Huh? Don't sell me out. I am. <laughs> I am. They want to hear. You guys want to hear the tea. You guys want to know what she did. Yeah, you want to know. I know. Yeah, just sip the tea. Sip the tea. Please tell me. She prayed for miracle money, and miracle money came through her door. She was very excited until she got home. Then she got home and she had the envelope. So I was like, "Mom, you put the money in the bank yet?" <laughs> Andrea. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel very troubled in my spirit about this money. <laughs> I said, you do? Yes, I just I don't know where it's come from. I don't know who did it. I was like, did you pray for very good money? She was like, yes, but I just, I said, honey, I don't have no problem with your miracle money. If you have a problem with the miracle money, put it in my account, I'll spend it for you. I ain't got no problem with the miracle money. And I was like, mom, see when God shows up, sometimes we do, we, we really don't expect him to show up. We really don't. We ask him for things and we actually don't really expect him to show up with the thing that we ask for. 
But I'm telling you, when God shows up with the thing that you asked him for, be ready to receive it. Because it can be very overwhelming. Like, I'm like, Lord, hmm, the, the husband that you're going to give me, I don't know if I'm ready for him. Because if I'm getting double for my trouble, hell, lordy, 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 because I've had to let go some good ones as well, you know, because God said no. I've had to let go some very good guys because the Lord said no. But I'm telling you, Christine, right? Hmm. I celebrated with Christine when she got married. I was so, oh, I was so happy. You know, and when you see your sisters in Christ get husbands, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And I tell you, you ladies here waiting on God, keep waiting and don't settle. Don't settle. If they tell you you're picky, you say, hmm. so what are you saying? What, what do you want me to say? You're so picky. Hmm. All right then. What do you want me to do? I don't have nothing to say. Your opinion doesn't change anything. You can say what you like. That's why you're not married. <laughs> okay. I know that God is in control of my life. I know God told me that he will supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. If I need a husband, God will supply it. Do you hear that? If you need a husband, God will supply him. If you don't need it, keep doing what God told you to do, babes, until the time comes. And if it doesn't, just keep doing what he told you to do because that's a win-win situation. It's a win-win. Then you don't have to be disappointed. Oh, but God, I already, I already made my peace. I said, God, if you want to give me a husband, you told me to supply my needs. If I need it, you'll give me. If I need a car, you give me a car. If I need house, you give me a house. If I need food, you give me food. If I need peace, you give me peace. If I need joy, you give me joy. If I need wisdom, you give me wisdom. You give me what I need. And there are times when you need that peace. There are times when you need that joy. There are times when you need that wisdom. There are times when you need that, that supernatural downpour of his love and his presence. He said, I will supply all of your needs according to my riches in glory just just fathom that so when he gives you peace it don't make no sense when all hell is breaking this and you got three pounds in your account <laughs> and you're asking for miracle money and he sends it and you don't know what to do with yourself because you really didn't expect him to do it and then just to show off he sends a little extra He's like, well, you didn't think it was me. Let me send you a little more. <laughs> Here you go. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. He's not a God of disappointment. Disappointment doesn't come from him. Disappointment doesn't come from him. But sometimes we interpret a no as a disappointment. Sometimes a no was the best answer that God could have given you in your whole entire life. How many of you know that? Sometimes getting that no was the best thing that ever happened to you, Jesus Lord. Sometimes getting that no was the best thing that ever happened. In hindsight, looking back. Sometimes that business not taking off, that investment not going through, that relationship. Sometimes that not getting that job, not getting that promotion. Sometimes the no is the best answer that could have ever happened. And it's to be grateful in those times when God says no and just have an attitude of gratitude. But you know what, God? I know you know what's best for me. And I trust you with every single area of my life, every avenue of my life, I trust you. Get into that trust place with God. It's levels. I have so much peace these days. I have so much peace. I, I get up in the morning, I have peace. I don't suffer depression. I haven't suffered depression for about three, four months now. I haven't even felt it. I haven't felt it. I haven't felt it. It's gone. And you know, sometimes you try to invite it back. 
<laughs> you know, sometimes when you're feeling bad and you start to feel better, you're like, no, wait, wait, let me invite the bad feeling. No. Like, why do we do that? Sometimes we actually try to hold on to the bad feeling. You know, like when you're in a bad mood, right? And someone's trying to make you laugh. And you can feel the laughter coming, but you're trying to stay vexed. <laughs> Have you ever done that? You know, like Wednesday, and you just like, and they're doing foolishness, and you're like, but you're trying to hold on to the next station. You know, you're trying to hold on. You're holding, and God says something. Just, just let it go. Why are you trying to hold on to the negative energy for? Why are you trying to? Why are you trying to hold on to the next station of spirits? <laughs> let the next station of spirit go. Sometimes you just got to look that devil in the eye and say, guess what? I'm about to get mm, mm, high. And you know what that means? Uplifted, motivated, hopeful, inspired, and invigorated. How many of you wanna get mm, high? I wanna get mm, high, I wanna be mm, high every day. I wanna be uplifted, I wanna be motivated, I wanna be happy, hopeful, inspired and invigorated i'm telling you and i tell you what's another another really good a really good thing to to eradicate negative energy i came on and i sang this song a few weeks ago and i didn't realize what was actually being deposited i knew it was something but it was being deposited in the atmosphere and it's such a powerful song and mom mom was going through something this week and that song came into her spirit and I remember, mum, you sang that song and you just sang it. And I, I remember when you were singing it to me, I, I could feel the song. I could feel you singing it from your spirit. I remember you singing it and I was like, mm -mm, you're not just singing that. You're singing that from your spirit. I am going to sing the song for you. And it goes a little something like this. And wait, before I sing it, wait, before I sing it, I just want to tell you something. When you are in a negative situation, Sing this song. The negative energy can't stay there while you sing this song. It can't. I don't know why. Well, I do know why, because it's full of positive energy. It's full of God's love. And when you sing this song, it, 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 the negative energy can't stay. I'm telling you, this is, another, this is another one of them good ones. And the song is, This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. If you didn't feel that, then I don't know. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, oh, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, oh, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let, hey, listen, if you got your tambourine, let it shine. Come on, one more time. Oh, this is the light of mine. Listen, back in my old church, they don't let it shine. Are you there? Mm, this is the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, 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 let it shine. I hope that song sticks in your head all week. 
when the person cross your con, when you're on the bus or when you're in the workplace and the person's getting on your nerves, just start singing. This girl out of my, they'll be thinking, are you crazy? I'm gonna let it shine. Why are you singing that song? Oh, this girl out of my, mm, when they're trying to say stuff, I'm gonna let it shine. When the kids are getting on your nerves, oh, this girl out of my, oh, when the husband, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. <laughs> Listen, that song right there, let it shine. Excuse my, my crusty voice though, because as you can hear, my voice is very, very tired. I've had days in the studio, like I was in the studio the other day and I must have thought that I was in my teens because it was a late night one and I was in the studio till three o'clock in the morning. And it was only when I went to the mic to sing and my voice went, ah! and I said, <laughs> it's time to go home. I don't have no more voice. I got to go home now. I realized my age, we are not That works anymore. for me, Andrea. Ah? Uh? That song, it worked for me in the shop. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, it did, yeah. <laughs> Listen, sometimes you just gotta sing that song, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. So, I don't know, if, any, if you guys have any questions, like, and guys, don't be, don't be um, shy to ask some questions, you know. Um, as you guys know, I am a life coach and, I'm always willing to answer questions if you have any questions. And if you want to know about the life coaching program, do check out my website. It's isi.co.uk. Um, it's really warm in here. Um, and yeah, you can get at me on Instagram, Facebook, and yeah, just come and find out about the love journey because it's an amazing journey and you would not regret it. Okay. So um, yeah. Anybody want to say anything? Anybody? No. If not, I'm going to end the session because I'm not just going to keep going for going sake. But I think tonight has been good. And if you want to join us on the fast, um, like I said, we're fasting from midnight tonight until six tomorrow evening. We'll be breaking it at six and we will be in this Zoom room at 5.45 just for 15 minutes of prayer so that we can break our fast together. So if you wanna join us tomorrow at 5.45, we will be here um, just having 15 minutes of prayer and yeah, just breaking our fast. And then the same um, on Friday, um, we will be breaking our fast on Friday, okay? So I love you guys and yeah, have a wonderful evening and let's go kick disappointments, but we are not having it anymore. <laughs>